Hi, it's Chris. So finally we will open up some telescopes. There are plenty of them on the market and I think you should have a basic idea of who's who before you buy a scope. We have two categories of scopes. Lens scopes, called refractors, and mirror scopes, called reflectors. Both aim to collect lots of light from a given source so that you can see faint and distant objects. The first big category are the lens scopes or refractors. They use a primary lens with a given aperture to collect the light. The main mechanism behind refractors is the ability of lenses to refract, hence the name, incoming light in such a way that in theory it will be focused on a single point behind the lens. That's for parallel light beams only, but stars tend to have such, so we're safe. The point of focus is called focal point, and the length from lens to focal point is called focal length. So this is the main mechanism, and it's great and simple and stuff, but has one major disadvantage. A lens refracts light depending on its color, so its wavelength. This effect is called chromatic aberration. So unfortunately for us, the path of the blue light is bent more than the light path of the red light. It ends with a situation where you can focus one color of an object, but get aberrations with the other colors. That often leads to multicolor edges when contrast goes high. When observing high contrast objects like moon or stars, that's nothing you want to see. The thumb rule? The lower the F ratio, so the shorter the focal length with a given aperture, the more curved the lens is, and therefore the more significant the chromatic aberration is. So single lens scopes are cheap, but needs to be very long. Long focal length means less curved lens and therefore less chromatic aberration. But thing is, then you will only get f16 or above, so very narrow scopes. In order to solve the problem of chromatic aberration, you then introduce a second lens to compensate for the error and call this an achromatic refractor or a doublet. There you are able to minimize the effect by bringing two colors of your choosing to the same focal point, normally that is blue and red, and you can therefore achieve much shorter focal length still with a big aperture, so a lower f ratio, without ruining your images too much. Downside? Doublets are more costly than single lens scopes. Either way, one color is still out, normally it's green. So what do we do? We introduce once another lens. Then the colors can merge nearly totally, yet not perfectly, on one focal point, and we get the apochromatic refractor or triplet. They have a very good optical quality as they bring down all colors to one focal point and hence can be used with an even shorter focal length, I mean f ratio. You can see triplets down to f4 or something. Downside? They are incredibly expensive. Upside? You tend to get beautiful images, so... Whatever. These are the lens scopes. Single lens, achromatic and apochromatic refractors. The second big branch are the mirror scopes, or say reflectors. They use a totally different approach to gather light. They don't refract it, they, you will never guess it, reflect it. And using a curved surface, mostly parabolic, they are able to concentrate all incoming light into one point. Again, this point is our focal point, and the distance primary mirror focal point is our focal length. A cool thing about reflectors, first, mirrors are much cheaper than lenses and so the diameter of reflectors tends to be much wider than with refractors. Second thing, reflectors don't suffer from chromatic aberration, they reflect light no matter what the color is, so no corrections needed. Mirror scopes or reflectors come in different shapes. Best known is the Newton reflector. This is his, I mean Sir Newton's second scope. It's made from wood, and very beautiful, yes. The basic layout goes like this. You gather light with a primary mirror, then the light gets focused. Before it reaches the focal point, it hits the secondary mirror and bounces off the side. There it reaches focus. So whereas refractors are the scopes most people are familiar with, Newton reflectors always confuses people when they first see one. You actually have to look into the scope from the side, not from the back. There is one major downside to reflectors though. 
Despite having no chromatic aberration, they center light into one focal point only if it comes in parallel to the optical axis, like this. If you look at the stars on the edges of the field of view, so if we introduce an angle like this, there you can see that we are losing focus. So the further away an object is from the center of an image, the more distortion effects you will have. So for fast Newtonians, this means you will need some sort of corrector lens, aka coma corrector. So sometimes, going with a higher f-ratio on Newtonians can be a good option. Though my Skywatcher at 750mm focal length is f5, and yes, I see comet-like stars at the edges, but I would say first get a grip on everything else before you try to perfect the corner stars. Just my opinion. Whatever, let's move on. With ever-increasing focal length, the scope gets longer and way heavier too. This call for reducing the tube length sped the development of mirror scopes with folded light paths. First we look at the popular Cassegrain design. The secondary mirror reflects the light straight back through a hole in the primary. Because the secondary is convex, the light path gets widened and you achieve even higher focal lengths. Most popular are the Smith Cassegrain scopes, I'd say. They use a cheaper spherical primary. Then you would have bad focus effects, but they introduce a big refraction glass, so a big flat lens at the entrance of the aperture to recorrect for that. What else can you spot on the market? Ah yes, the MAX, M-A-K-S, or Maxitov telescopes. They have a curved corrector plate with a flat secondary reflection spot glued right onto it and a spherical prime. So it's not that costly, but tries to correct for any sort of aberrations at the edges. Confused? Yeah, it's a lot. But keep the Newtonian reflector and the light folding scopes in your memory. There are literally hundreds of variations out there, including Rasa and others. Seriously, we can't cover them all here, but these are the main categories you can put all of them. The scopes with a main lens, called refractors. They come with one lens, single lens refractor, a doublet, then mostly called achromatic refractor, as a triplet, then mostly called apochromatic refractor. The more correction lenses, the better and the more expensive they get. The scopes with a main mirror called reflectors. Newtons tend to be the most popular design, the Cassegrain and others fold the light path to shorten the tube. Additional lens covers try to correct for coma aberrations at the image edges. <sighs> So, that was a first rundown through the types of telescopes you can buy on the market. I hope it will help you by categorizing the different scopes out there. Next video we will take a closer look at light paths, uh, obstructed mirrors and how focal length is related to the FOV. All in science behind telescopes, so stay tuned. <clears throat> and if you don't want to miss anything, make sure to subscribe right now. Like this video? Share it with others, for that they may here find their starting point for this amazing hobby, or just simply hit like. That's cool too. I want to use the last seconds to give an advice. Don't hurry buying the first scope. Please take your time and, for example, watch these videos, or some of the hundreds other videos out there. Read and dig, talk to persons in nice and helpful forums, and then, after you get an idea of the whole, say, field of astronomy, then go and buy a scope. I will cover my first rig in the second chapter of this tutorial, but I might have done things a little different, being today's me back then. And so, as always, I say clear skies everyone, until next time, here on Catching Photons.